Okay, so last time we had a lecture, I guess a week ago today, we were talking about reservoir depletion, and specifically what we talked about that day was induced faulting from depletion. And so this was just sort of the cartoon plot that shows how stress magnitudes can change uh, for an isolated reservoir in a homogeneous, otherwise homogeneous half space of Earth. Um, that you can have significant stress amplifications due to depletion, and then of course that can lead to faulting. And we covered uh, some of that in the so-called reservoir space plot and other things. So we're going to kind of continue that, or uh, at least with respect to faulting, one of the things that can happen is you can have localized stress rotations near faults. Okay, and so. Where, when I say rotations, I mean rotations with respect to the far field principal stresses. So the far field principal stresses can be in one direction, but if you have um, faults, and in this case we're just going to look at an example of a ceiling fault, uh, but if you have faults, then you can have uh, stress rotations due to depletion, and then that can lead to possibly other induced faulting, or in other cases, uh, where we talk about stimulation, like with hydraulic fracturing, uh, stress rotations can be really beneficial because if you were to uh, stimulate the well with hydraulic fracturing, deplete it for a while and have the stresses rotate, then you can refracture the well and the, and the, f the um, hydraulic fracture would grow along a different azimuth. And, and so then you can access parts of the reservoir that weren't initially stimulated. So it can be really, really beneficial and something worth sort of knowing. Um, I guess if we, what we'll do here is we'll uh, if we consider our little kind of characteristic. piece of material, except this time the material has a fault in it, and we'll assume that this fault is sealing, such that the, f there's no, the fluid doesn't transmit across the fault, so that if we had a well uh, on this side of the fault, and we depleted the well by delta P, then that depletion would only occur on, on this side of the well. Okay, So on one side of the well, you have depletion occurring, and on the other side of the well, due to the nature of the fault being sealing, there's no, de there's no depletion, okay? And so, then if you had the far field, principal stress field, like this, then what we're going to do is we're going to superimpose, oh, I guess I should label this, uh, this fault is characterized by some angle theta. And then if we just, now that, while there's a fault there, the, the, we're, we're assuming this characteristic piece of earth is in equilibrium, so there's no motion across the fault. It's, it's in equilibrium. So if we deplete this side of the fault, if we deplete this side of the fault by alpha delta, p, I mean a delta p, where a is the, the the stress path that we defined last time. So if we deplete this side by a delta p, because the thing's in equilibrium, then there must be a counter counteracting a delta p on this side, even though there's no depletion occurring here. Right? It's just due to the nature of the thing that there's the fact that it's in equilibrium. So if there's, a for, if there's a force change of A delta P here, there's also going to be a force change of A delta P there, or stress change, because there's no motion on the fault. And so then if we were basically just to use statics, free body diagrams, to write the components of stress on the fault in terms of the X and Y axes and what we're going to get something like this.
So this is, just to be clear, if you have some normal, some normal force on the fault, then the, the you know, some normal traction or whatever, these S's are the components of that guy. Okay, so then you'd also have a shear stress. So that's just from statics and, and essentially drawing a free body diagram on the fault. And so then with that, we didn't, re we didn't really talk about it, but from just from the geometry of more circles, um, if we do any rotation, we, we, if we call a, a rotation of a stress, um, th this, this comes from the fact that we're assuming a plane strain assumption here, so that in the in the far field, the horizontal uh, the s horizontal displacements are zero, and then we can write more circles in terms of plane strain or the plane strain assumption. You might remember that from statics class. We're not going to go into the details here, but then from that plane strain, you can take the stress and rotate it about any angle, <coughs> in the or um, or you can define an angle of rotation via any components of the stress. Um, and in this case, we're using gamma. But the equation for that is 1 half tangent inverse 2 tau xy sx minus sy. Okay? So this just comes from more circles for plane strain. And so then if we just take, take these guys, and plug them into this equation and then do some simplifications we get we get that equation okay where again a is defined as the stress path we talked about it last time and then q is just a just sort of a convenience term that th this delta p over this principal stress difference shows up a bunch in the equation so if you just group it in terms of, we call it q then it makes the equations a little bit different so uh, this is in a way to ID to under this idealized scenario to estimate how much the stress will change according to how much the stress would rotate according to this depletion. Right? Okay. So if that rotation is significant and you're considering a stimulation or re-stimulation of a well, then you might access parts of the reservoir. So this is this is just sort of a back of the envelope calculation as to how much um, rotation you might expect uh, due to that. And of course, th you know, now, nowadays we're, we're doing much more sophisticated, fully coupled geomechanical models, you know, computer simulations to try to understand, partic particularly for hydraulic fracturing, uh, we're trying to understand exactly, um, you know, in the next few years we're going to be doing a lot of refracturing, right, much cheaper. And we know very little about it, about how to do it correctly. And so uh, it's a big area of research and using the latest models to <coughs> you know, actually deplete a well via reservoir simulation, see how much stress change has occurred, and see what, and see what the best you know, stimulation technique would be in a refracturing scenario. Uh, 